It's a rare brain tumor that can rapidly grow and spread into nearby brain tissue. That's right, and treatment is a challenging task due to the location and complexity of this tumor. Today, one man's story of his shocking diagnosis and his determination to survive. Let's go behind the mystery of glioblastoma. I'm a New Orleanian, I live in the Bend of Bourbon Street. I'm a real estate broker. I love to travel, seeing just about every country. I mean, it's a short list of the places I haven't visited. I love to collect art, heavily involved in all the aspects of New Orleans. Despite being in great health most of his life, in 2005, things took a dramatic turn when he had a seizure during a house showing with clients. I'm on the floor. They have an ambulance pick me up, take me to Turo, and I'm there lying in the bed. And so they're going to do a needle biopsy, and that's when they found that I had glioblastoma. And I was absolutely petrified, of course. I mean, you're facing mortality, and it's scary. The Balancing Act met with Dr. Sigmund Sue, who has extensive experience in the evaluation and treatment of neurological disorders in cancer patients. Gliomas are tumors that grow into the brain, and they have four grades from grade one to grade four. Grade four tumors are the most aggressive. Glioblastomas are very difficult to treat. They have a poor prognosis of about 20 months. They regrow despite our best treatments, and when they regrow, they are resistant to their prior treatments and cause more neurologic disability and eventually death. Common symptoms of GBM depend on the location of the tumor and may include headaches, seizures, confusion, memory loss, dizziness, blurred vision, and frequent fainting. The initial physicians will be doing a neurologic exam. They'll often start with a CT scan and they will need to go to an MRI. In order for us to make a diagnosis by either getting just a biopsy of the tumor if, or to get a maximum safe resection. Approximately 13,000 new cases of glioblastoma tumors are diagnosed each year. The standard of care for treatment of glioblastoma after maximum safe resection is radiation with additional oral chemotherapy at the same time. Glioblastoma is so aggressive that even with the standard of care treatment, the mean time to recurrence is approximately four to six months. So despite best treatment, the tumor will start growing back. Once Dorian received his diagnosis, he flew to a specialty care center in Houston, Texas for treatment. So after surgery, I had to do chemotherapy and radiation. My family was here with me throughout my entire ordeal with the brain tumor. They were great support. You know, my wife would travel with me to Houston. I had a trip planned to Machu Picchu, and so I canceled the trip, telling the doctors, be assured that I was going to Machu Picchu, but that it would be at a later date. There was a lot of doom and gloom around me, and so people were pretty sure I was dying, that they were seeing me on the tail end of life. But, you know, but I didn't feel that inside. And so I, I, I just had to take it one day at a time. We have not made significant advances in improving survival for glioblastoma for the last 10 or 20 years. We believe why a lot of treatments fail or are ineffective for our glioblastoma patients is that the brain has a special protective barrier called the blood-brain barrier that protects the brain from poison and most chemotherapies are considered poisonous. So chemotherapies that can't get into the brain so they don't work. Blastoma is not surgically curable because the glioblastoma has left behind cells deep into the brain, then again grow. Nine months after treatment, they found out the treatment was no longer working and the tumor had come back. Because of that, I was offered a clinical trial position and uh, and so uh, I signed on for that. I mean, unbelievably fortunate that I was able to participate in a clinical trial. There's still hope. The newest advance for the treatment of glioblastoma patients is the use of tumor treating fields. To the standard of care, 
of radiation and oral chemotherapy. We hope that new treatments for glioblastoma, which can cross the blood-brain barrier, will be more effective at delivering treatments to the tumor cells. Recent advances in next-generation sequencing of glioblastoma hopefully lead to new targets and new drugs. While these treatments are investigational, we are hopeful that these will lead to the next advance in survival for glioblastoma patients. It was an interesting time period when I think back on it. It was the meanest, most obnoxious road stop and hurdle that I've ever encountered, okay, for sure. And, and I thank God that I had all those brilliant, wonderful, kind, loving doctors that were there to usher me through this unbelievable time in my life, because I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Neuro-oncologists and the brain tumor community are desperate for new treatments. Our glioblastoma patients with it deserve much better. We encourage patients to participate in clinical trials so we are able to develop the next generation of treatments for this deadly tumor. The brain tumor community are working our hardest to try to bring new therapies to the forefront for our patients through new research to better understand the basic science behind glioblastoma, which make them so deadly and difficult to treat. I'm spending more time in my books, uh, studying the art, traveling the world. It was probably about maybe six years ago that we went to Machu Picchu and uh, it was a magical trip. What a remarkable story. Amazing, amazing. Well, you can learn more about glioblastoma at cnspharma.com. And you can go to our website, as always, thebouncingact.com. And we'll be back right after this.